Video game companies refuse to release an actually portable console because they don't want you to own the games that you buy. They've tried to placate us with these giant monstrosities they called handhelds, but it's not the same. You know it, they know it, and now I'm going to tell you why, or at least speculate. But before we get into that, please leave a like on the video and subscribe while you're down there. I believe that no one is willing to make a truly portable console a la the Nintendo DS. Nintendo DS, touching is good. The Game Boy, the PSP, or PS Vita because a prevalence in mobile handheld consoles means a prevalence in offline gaming. As I'm sure you're well aware, there is a thriving retro handheld console market. This, in and of itself, is proof that there is a demand for mobile gaming apart from your 19-inch screen smartphone, or whatever the fuck this is. I had intended to do a little bit more digging into finding proof for the popularity and demand of retro handheld consoles or just like aftermarket handhelds, but you know, I think the evidence is clear enough just considering that the Soulja game exists and sold to real people. The reason that they're so scared of making an actually portable offline console is because they want to be able to continue to do stupid shit like what they did with Helldivers 2. Helldivers 2 is a game that was developed by Arrowhead Game Studios and published by Sony. It was distributed exclusively to PS5 and PC. However, not only that, the game only cost $40 on release. However, a few weeks later, Sony decided to make the super smart decision to require that to play Helldivers 2, you needed to sign into an active PlayStation Network account. Okay, kind of annoying, but not the worst thing until you realize that there are many countries out there who do not have the ability to create a PlayStation Network account, thus prohibiting them from playing the game that they spent $40 on. Now, I don't want to feign outrage about this. I live in America and have PlayStation Premium, the one with the classics. I didn't even buy the game. To be honest, I wasn't really that interested. Wasn't on my radar. But I did want to play Jedi Survive. But to do that, I had to play Fallen Order. And it just so happens that a year of EA Play is the cost of Fallen Order on sale. Or Helldivers 2, 40 bucks. And scrolling through the list of games that they had on offer, they had Titanfall 2 and Mirror's Edge Catalyst. I used to love playing Mirror's Edge on the 360, so I got EA Play. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, uh, okay. Developers like EA do shit like this and console makers like Sony stand by complicit in their unwillingness to make products and policies that require some kind of ownership for games that we're paying hundreds of dollars for and not even getting a physical product. At least then I could see you justifying some of the cost in the distribution of physical copies and the additional media that comes with it. Remember when you used to get map posters in games? Do they still do that? I personally shelled out an extra hundred bucks or whatever to get the disc edition of the PS5 just so that I still had the ability to not only use it as a Blu-ray player but play games that I bought physically, just in case. Now, it's easy to get away with this on traditional consoles or PCs because they have the expectation of being always online because if you can afford the cost of a $600 console, you probably should be able to afford the cost of Wi-Fi to play on it unless you unexpectedly lose your job on a Tuesday afternoon. But anyway, you and I both know that if a console this size can handle Call of Duty and Metal Gear Solid 10 years ago, and that shit like this exists, then we are perfectly capable of building an actually portable console capable of playing games offline without connecting to a server because we own them. That is all.